Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm Rachel. I was 11 years old when I was diagnosed with ADHD. I was diagnosed with ADHD at the age of 13. ADHD has a strong genetic basis and is characterized by inattention, hyperactivity, impulsivity, and more. People with ADHD have been found to have smaller frontal lobes, slower brain development, and have trouble processing dopamine. Tell me about you before your diagnosis with ADHD. I would say in lower school and all throughout school, I was pretty creative, very extroverted, um, always hanging out with my friends, and I always tried hard to focus in school, but it wasn't always something that came so easily to me. I really think from the time that I was a kid, I was focused in school on everything except the actual schoolwork. Um, I was actually, I took a test when I was younger to be in this advanced program at school, and I got kicked out of the test halfway through because I was talking to the other kids around me. It wasn't that I was um, a troublemaker, but I just could not focus on the task at hand. I needed to do everything except that actual task. There has been a 42% increase in ADHD diagnoses in the past eight years, with males three times more likely to be diagnosed than females. In 2016, almost 10% of 2- to 17-year-olds were diagnosed with ADHD in the U.S., while only 3% of American children were diagnosed in the 90s. So why is ADHD so common now? Tell me what happened when you were first diagnosed with ADHD. So I remember the appointment. Um, my mom got a referral, and so we went to this doctor and I sat on his couch and he was starting to ask me all these questions and I began to get visibly upset and I started crying just realizing the way he was speaking that I was missing out on all these things not even in my, in my education just in life because I was so distracted to the point where I couldn't get anything done so it really showed me that I was missing out on something that was so out of my control. I honestly felt a sigh of relief because it gave reason for all the things I had been feeling before going through school, not being able to focus as well as the other people, taking a long time to get things done. It all gave it a reason. Sociological factors heavily contributed to the rise in ADHD diagnoses. Changes in the way we school children, the way we interact with doctors, and what we expect from kids all have given rise to a growing acceptance and awareness of ADHD and other attention deficit disorders. Kids who are diagnosed with ADHD have access to tutors, time allowances on tests, and more to accommodate in schools. What did your doctors offer as treatment? They first offered Adderall, starting at 10 milligrams, and then working my way up to 20, 30, and then I still today am at 30 since then. Well, it started with just the lowest dosage of 10 milligrams of Adderall. A common prescription for ADHD is amphetamine, commonly known by the brand name Adderall, which stimulates the sympathetic and central nervous systems, producing excess dopamine and leads to higher energy levels, improved focus, and decreased restlessness and fidgeting. The pharmaceutical industry also has made a profitable business off of drugs such as Adderall. As in 1997, the overhaul of the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S. allowed drug companies to more easily market directly to the public. In the U.S., incentives of overdiagnosis and overprescribing is a complex issue that is deeply rooted in the pharmaceutical industry. Cerebral, for example, is a popular and lucrative telehealth provider that uses TikTok to recruit patients using advertisements. Based on results, drugs are quickly mailed to the patient's doorsteps. The pharmaceutical industry maximizes their profits by raising prices and increasing the consumption of medication. When patients ask their doctor about a medication such as Adderall, the doctors are likely to prescribe it. Because of this, drug companies spent $6 billion in 2016 on direct-to-consumer drug ads. Growth and quick turnaround times are being prioritized over genuine, nuanced medical care, perpetuating the issue of overprescription of drugs such as Adderall. As much as I'm grateful for all the ways that Adderall has helped me, I also feel like it has changed me being my full natural self in a lot of ways. I feel more irritable, I'm never hungry, I'm always hyper-focused on things, and I'm not my full happy-go-lucky self. Amphetamine prescription also poses a higher risk of addiction and abuse. Increased dopamine levels in the brain have a similar effect to having sex or eating a cake. 
an addictive quality. As I began to take more and more, it totally changed my appetite. It made me not hungry, it made me agitated. During lunch, I wouldn't even talk to my friends around me. I would just be so busy at work, I wasn't even focused on eating. Some days I would even take it when I didn't wanna eat. Overuse of Adderall causes the brain to try and compensate for the extra dopamine by stripping out its own dopamine receptors. The reduction of receptors makes the person need more of the Adderall to produce the dopamine. Withdrawal occurs since the capacity of the brain to experience reward is below its natural levels. I find it to be almost impossible to try and do any schoolwork when I'm on my Adderall. The black market for Adderall is common among students today as students who are prescribed Adderall are reselling their spare prescriptions. Unprescribed students use these easily accessible drugs to compensate for procrastinating schoolwork and deadlines. According to a study published by the Clinical Child and Family Psychology Review Journal in 2015, 17% of college students misuse prescription stimulants like Adderall mainly for academic purposes and secondarily for recreational purposes. The majority of first-time prescription stimulant misuse occurs young, between the ages of 16 and 19. There are even guides easily accessible on the internet for dealers, like the studybreaks.com article, How to Sell Your Spare Art Adderall, a guide for the new dealer. Hi, thank you for meeting with us today. Would you just mind starting um, telling us a little bit about your journey with Adderall and age struggling with ADHD? I was prescribed at the age, the young, ripe age of eight years old, and my parents were so pro medication. But as I got older, I started to not really need the medicine as much, but my parents still didn't believe me, so they kept ordering the prescriptions every month. So um, the days that I wasn't in school, or I didn't feel like I needed to focus as much were the days that I skipped my pill. And over time, I had this large quantity of built up pills. So at the end of the month, there was definitely a market for me to just sell it to kids that were begging for it. Were there any risks posed with selling Adderall? But, you know, realistically, in any college setting, as I began to get older, I started to think about how many underage students are getting access to alcohol, access to drugs like marijuana. And it began to dawn on me that all these under the table sales aren't too difficult. I didn't feel like I was putting myself at any adverse risk, and it was definitely a lucrative market. With high stakes of standardized testing, increased competition in schooling, and a less accommodating economy today, some say that ADHD could be a convenient societal catch-all for what happens when kids are expected to be many adults. So what do we do now? Should interventions be put in place to target middle, high, and college students about the misuse of this drug? Could social media become powerful sources of health information, or do the risks outweigh the benefits? So much is unknown about Adderall. What are the long-term effects? Does the brain return to its original state once off the drug? As much as I hate how it changes my personality, I do use Adderall as a crutch, and I do foresee myself using it into the future.